Although the Infrastructure Access Control List, the acronym for it, looks like something that could be trademarked by Apple, it can help us defend against a lot of bogus traffic before it makes its way through our network. And that's what we're going to focus on in this micro nugget. Let's begin. One of the challenges that we might face is that if we have a router that's connected to the internet, it's very likely that some packets from the internet may try to make their way into our network. Now, not every single packet is going to be nice and innocent and pleasant. We might have some malicious traffic that's trying to enter. One mechanism that we can use to help reduce the amount of bogus traffic that comes in is to use something called an infrastructure access control list. And we're going to place it inbound on the interface on our router that faces the untrusted network. So in this video, in addition to talking about the contents of what might go into our infrastructure access control list, I want to reinforce the reasons why we would have this in the first place. We want to stop malicious traffic from coming in, and we want to protect our infrastructure devices. Maybe we have some routers and some other devices inside of our company that we don't want the rest of the internet to go ahead and try to take advantage of. So what might we include in this infrastructure access control list? Well, we may want to deny some source IP addresses. For example, if we have these hosts with 55, 44, 33, 195, and 200, and they're inside of our network, any packets trying to come into our network that claim they're coming from that source address, those are bogus. So we want to go ahead and include deny statements for any IP addresses that we have internal to our network and deny any source traffic that says it's from those addresses from coming in. We'd want to deny any special use addresses. For example, the all zeros. Not a good idea to let a packet come into our network when the source address is all zeros or the source address is like 127 something. Those are all bogus. On the live internet, we also wouldn't expect to see any packets coming in who claim to be from the 10 network or the 172.16 or any of the private address space. We'd want to block those at the edge if we see those source IP addresses trying to come in. If we've been given a block of IP addresses, maybe our block is... 55.44.33.192 slash 28. Well, if that's our block of addresses, at the edge of our network, we probably want to limit any packets that are trying to come into our network that are claiming to be from that address space because those are very likely bogus packets as well. And one caveat is that if we are blocking our address space, this range right here, we only want to do that at the edge because internal to our network, we may actually be routing and using that as a source address so on routers that are more internal to our network, we don't want to block that source address. So this is a note just at the edge is where we would block packets claiming that they have a source IP address from our block of addresses. In this case, our edge router is R2. Now for our infrastructure devices, like maybe we have a router here and a router here, they're both running BGP, for example. We are going to want to allow specific protocols that these devices are using. So maybe we have some BGP peers on the outside. We definitely want to allow those IP addresses and those ports involved. So TCP port 179, we would want to make sure that R2 allows that traffic. Now with BGP, depending on who initiates the BGP session, it could be a source port of TCP 179 or a destination port of TCP 179. And if you want to open both of those, that would be okay too. That way either device, the internal or the external, could initiate the BGP session. And if we have other protocols that need to go from the outside to some of our infrastructure devices, we'd want to make the appropriate holes or permit statements in our access control list as well. Now, because we are building an infrastructure access control list, once we've explicitly permitted traffic to our infrastructure devices, for example, one or more of these routers, we then want to go in and deny all traffic to those specific addresses. So in that case, the BGP would work if we poked holes just for BGP and everything else to those specific addresses, our infrastructure devices would be denied. And the major goal of this infrastructure access control list is to, you got it, protect the infrastructure. So most of these items on the list are a deny, with the exception of this permit statement right here. And at the very end of this access list, we are going to go ahead and put a permit for everything else. And it's very likely that we'll have other intermediate devices doing more granular permissions and finally controlling what actually gets into our network. But at the very edge, the infrastructure access control list is a great idea. The other idea is on all these deny statements, we could add a log keyword. So we could log that information and see exactly what's being denied by those deny statements in the infrastructure ACL. 
to help reinforce these concepts, let's go through an example together using R2. The 0 slash 2 interface is the one that we'll be applying this access control as to. We're going to start off with anti-spoofing entries. Because we do have a device at .195 and .200, we're going to go ahead and specifically say anybody who's trying to come in with source IP addresses of either of these infrastructure devices, we're going to go ahead and deny that traffic. It couldn't possibly be valid. Those IP addresses are not hanging off of the 0 slash 2 interface or anywhere else on the internet. Now for our next task, we're going to add some entries to deny special purpose IP addresses, and there's lots of them. We can refer to RFC 3330 for a full list, and in a production environment, you may want to go through those and maybe choose which ones or all of them that you want to go ahead and add as denies. So as an example, let's deny any traffic trying to come in on 0 slash 2 on R2 if the source address appears to be 0000. That's obviously not going to be valid. We're also going to deny any traffic that appears to be coming from the source address of 127 anything, because that also would be bogus. We're also going to stop any traffic that's trying to come in if it claims the source address is 192.0.2. We use that for black holing purposes in BGP. And then finally, let's do one more example. Any traffic coming in, if the source IP address is multicast, we're also going to kill that, drop it right there at the edge. Next, even though service providers should all be stopping any packets that have the source IP address of the RFC 1918 address space, if there is, however, some packet that does make it in and it's got a source IP address in that private address space, we want to deny it. So we'll take care of a deny based on the source address being in the 10, the 172.16 range, or the 192.168 range with the appropriate masks. The 172.16 is a slash 12, and the 192.168 is a slash 16. So we'll put in the appropriate wildcard masks to reflect that and basically stomp out all of that traditional 1918 traffic if it shows up as source IP addresses on the outside interface of our edge router. Now, other bogus traffic could be this. If we are assigned, our company has been given the block of 554433.192, let's say a slash 28. Any IP addresses coming into our network that claim to be coming from the source network of 554433.192 slash 28, those are bogus. So let's create an access control list that says, listen, any traffic that's claiming to come from our own address space, we want to go ahead and deny it right there in this infrastructure access control list. Now, regarding our infrastructure, if these devices right here are acting as the endpoint for a tunnel, we'd want to specifically permit traffic from the outside to those devices. Or for example, if they're running BGP with outside resources, we want to specifically poke holes that say permit these specific types of traffic to these specific IP addresses. So as an example, let's go ahead and choose, let's say .195 as a BGP host, and we'll add to our access control list two entries, both of which are dealing with BGP, and it just depends which one's going to be matched based on who initiates this session. Is it going to be .195? or dot 45 on the outside, who's going to initiate it. The initiator is going to be sending the packets to TCP port 179. So in our access control list, I'm going to hedge my bets, and I'm going to let either side go. Traffic between those two hosts, regardless of who starts the BGP session, I'm allowing that in the infrastructure access control list. And here's where we'd add additional permit statements for additional infrastructure devices to allow certain types of traffic. Now, if BGP, just as an example, is the only traffic that we want to allow to our infrastructure devices from the outside. The next thing we do is then in that same access list, deny explicitly all other types of traffic to those infrastructure devices. So in our example, we've got .195 and .200 at the top of our network topology. So we're going to simply put two access control entries in, one for .195, one for .200, saying deny all IP traffic to either of those IP addresses. And hopefully, we didn't forget anything in the permits just a few lines above this. So right here would be a great idea, by the way, adding the log keyword. And that way, we could go back to our logs and say, oh, by the way, yeah, we're missing NTP or <laughs> other protocols that might be very critical for those devices. And then last but not least, in our access control list, there is an implied deny, which is going to deny everything else by default. So if we want to open that up, we could add a permit IP any any at the end. Now, our infrastructure devices are going to be protected against any traffic trying to come into the network from the outside, and all other traffic that didn't get denied somewhere else in our access list will be permitted. It's very likely we'll have other routers inside of our network with finer controls about what's really being allowed to which destination resources. 
And then, of course, the last step would be to take this access list and apply it inbound on R2's 0 slash 2 interface to implement our infrastructure access control list on this router. I have had a great time. I'm glad you joined me for this video. If you're interested in other security related videos, here's a laundry list of other courses that we have to offer up at CPT Nuggets. If you're not yet a member, hey, check out our videos with a free seven day trial. I think you'll love us. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.